Hi everyone. In this series of videos we are looking at how to use the Avada Builder elements. Today we're looking at how to use the Gallery element. The Gallery element is a fully featured element that can create amazing galleries for your website. And while it's loaded with options, it's also very easy to get a simple gallery up and running in no time. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. I've set up a new page for a food gallery on the Avada Food Prebuilt website here, and so the first thing to do is add the gallery element to the page. When it loads, all we see is a placeholder, as there are no images added as yet. We're on the Children tab here, and there are two options to add images with, the Add Image button and the Bulk Add button. Let's use this option to insert a collection of images to make a gallery. I'm just going to click on Bulk Add here and I will choose some images I have prepared for the gallery and already uploaded to the media library. To select multiple images you use command click on Mac or control click on Windows. If you have a bunch of contiguous images like I have here, you can also just click on the first one and then shift click on the last one to select them all. Before I add them into the gallery I'll just make sure I'm adding the full size images here. Ok, so now I just need to click on insert into post at the bottom. So now the images appear, and as you can see, this loads all the images into the gallery element as individual child items. Another way to add images to the gallery is to either click the Add Image button at the top of the Children tab, and then edit the newly added item, and select or upload your image, or alternatively you can just clone an image, and then edit the selected image and choose another image to replace it. While we are in a child item, let's look at the options available. There are only two. There's the Image Link option, which enables you to link any image to a web page, or even a different image to open in the lightbox. If you add a URL, just ensure you are adding the full URL, including the protocol. I'll just link this image to a URL. And in the Link Target option, I will choose for it to open in a new window. And just note, if you link an image to a URL, it won't open in the lightbox like the others. Ok, so let's come back and move to the General tab. As mentioned, there is also a bulk image upload option here. Adding images here also allows you to use dynamic options, which would be useful if you wanted to make a gallery of featured images. Under this, there is the Order By option. The default is Descending, which is just how they have been added, but you can adjust this to Ascending or Random. Just note how in the description it explains that if you use Ascending or Random, the pagination in the Live Builder will not be the same as on the front end. The next option is Number of Items. This controls how many items initially display. It's set to minus 1 here which displays all the images. But as the description explains, I can set it to 0 for it to display the number of items from the reading page of the WordPress settings, or I can just choose a specific number. In this way, if I reduce this to 6 for example, we can add pagination to the gallery. Then we get a Load More button at the bottom. But in this case, I want to see all the images so I'll set this back to minus 1. Then comes the gallery layout. There are two layouts with the gallery element, grid and masonry, as well as two picture sizes for the grid layout, and the combinations you choose here will affect how your gallery displays. The grid layout is the default option. It's simple and it looks great. Just a quick side note here, that you set the default values for these options in the global options under Avada Builder Elements, Gallery which you can quickly access by clicking the cog icon on the individual options. Here you can set whatever default options you prefer. Ok, back to my gallery. In my example here I have used images of all the same size and aspect ratio. They are all 1920 by 1280 pixels, which gives them a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. And so the grid, as you can see, is uniform, and the images will all open at the same size in the lightbox. If I just save this page, and then open this on the front end, and then click on an image. We can see how it opens in the lightbox, and I can navigate through the images with the navigation arrow, the mouse wheel, or with the keyboard arrows. The linked image doesn't show in the lightbox, but if I close the lightbox and go back to the grid, and click that one, you can see it opens the link in a new tab as I selected. Ok, let's go back and have a further look at the element options. We'll have a look at the masonry layout and the picture size option in a bit, but let's look at the other options first. Images aspect ratio is next. Before you add images to a gallery, 
It's a really good idea to plan your gallery and to ensure all your images are the appropriate sizes and aspect ratios for what you want. But with this option, if you're working with images of different sizes for example, you can override the native aspect ratio as you wish. If I just choose an aspect ratio of 1 to 1, all our images become square. This won't affect the images when viewed in a lightbox, just the thumbs here on the gallery. There's also an images focus point option below this for controlling which part of the image is centered when cropped. Depending on the images you're using, these two options can be very powerful and helpful. I'll just set this back to automatic, which will show the image's native ratio. The next option, the image lightbox, is turned on by default. It's important to note here that images will display up to their full size in the lightbox, so if you want uniformity there, it's important that your gallery images are also the same sizes, not just the same aspect ratios. The option after that is called lightbox content, and this controls what captions or titles will display with your images when viewed in the lightbox. You can select from none, titles, captions, or titles and captions. These are pulled from the attachment details section of the individual images in the media library, so you have to add them manually in there. If I go to the media library and edit an image, you can see I have added titles and captions on the images here. Okay, so if I go back to the gallery element and look at the description here, it says that titles and captions can only be displayed when these are globally enabled for the lightbox as a whole. I can just click on the link to check that they are. This takes us to the lightbox global options, and here we can see that titles and captions are indeed enabled. It's also here you can determine what skin the lightbox uses, and where the thumbnails should be placed etc. I might leave it on metro white, but change the thumbnail position to the bottom. Ok, so now if I come back to the gallery element, I can then select what will display for the image when it's viewed in the lightbox. I will select titles and captions, so we can see what that looks like. The next option here is margin, and this allows you to set margins around the element as a whole. The remaining options on this tab are element visibility, which of course allows you to show or hide this element on various screen sizes, and the CSS class and CSS ID options if you want to further customize the element with custom CSS. Let's now move to the design tab. The first option here is for the number of columns in the gallery, and you can choose anywhere from 1 to 6 here. The default is 3, but depending on the number of images in your gallery and your design choices, you might want more or less. For this gallery, I'm happy with 3. There is also a responsive icon here, so this means that you can independently control how many columns there are on medium and small screens. If I go to medium screens, it steps down to 2, and this is because the number of columns here is set to 0, which as the description explains, we leave it on that for automatic column breaking. If we look at small screens, it steps down to one column. This makes the gallery work really well, and I'm happy with these options, but if you want, you can manually control how many columns display on the different screen sizes. Ok, let's go back to the desktop view. The next option here is column spacing. The default value is 10, and this is in pixels, but you can just enter a number here. I might change this to 20. You can also set a hover type if you wish. The default is zoom in here, but you can also choose from none, zoom out, and lift up. For my gallery, I'll just leave this on the default of zoom in. The next option is gallery image border size, and if you add a border, you can then also choose the colour. In this case I don't want a border, but a border radius might be nice. That's the next option. Here I will set an image border radius of 5 pixels. As you can see, the rounded border can be a nice effect, and you can of course adjust the border radius to whatever you like. Let's just save that work, and come back to our front end page, and refresh. And when we open an image in our gallery, we can see the thumbnails are now at the bottom, and the title and caption is showing on our image. Perfect. Ok, let's go back to the builder, and go back to the general tab, and have a look at the options I skipped over before. The picture size is an important option with the grid layout, as this can change the look of the gallery considerably. If you use auto, which in this case is the default value, then the aspect ratio of the images is respected. So if you had some square images, some portrait, and some landscape images, you would have an irregular grid. If you choose fixed, all images are displayed with the same aspect ratio, which may not look so great if your images are a different shape, as they would need to be cropped. In my current example, the gallery would look the same with either option, 
as all my images are the same aspect ratio. Images and aspect ratios can get a little complicated at times, so let me illustrate. I'll leave picture size on auto, and I'll edit one of the existing gallery images, but this time I will choose an image that is square rather than landscape. Now we can see that our uniform grid has been broken by the square shape of the new image. This is not necessarily a problem at all, it can be used to great effect, but of course it's just good to know how things work. If I return to the General tab, and change the picture size to Fixed, the page just updates, and now we can see that the grid is uniform again, as our image has been cropped to fit the grid. In this case it looks ok, but that will depend on your image. Of course if I open that image in the light box it will still be square. Ok, so the takeaway from this is that you need to plan your galleries and be aware of your image's aspect ratios and sizes, as well as the way the element works. If you want to have a mixture of landscape, portrait and square images, you can do this with the grid layout, but you can also use the other gallery layout for this, the masonry layout. The masonry layout is a little more advanced, but it can produce stunning results, not just in the gallery element but also in the portfolio and the blog element. See the link docs and videos below for more details on how to use the masonry layout with those two elements. Ok, let's have a look. For this example I have made a new gallery, and set the gallery layout to masonry. It has a mixture of landscape, square and portrait images, as it's with a mixture of image shapes that you get the most options. Initially the images are loading like this, except for the large spaghetti image. With this one, I edited the image directly in the media library, and if we just go there, we can see that I specified that for the masonry layout, this image should take up 2x2 two two squares. You can also choose 1x1, one one, or landscape, or portrait. We'll come back to this later, but now let's go back to the options. There are a couple of new ones when choosing masonry, and the first of these is the masonry image aspect ratio. Basically the number here represents a ratio where an image should be displayed as landscape or portrait. 1.5 is the default value. The option description explains that you set the ratio to decide when an image should become landscape, ratio being width to height, or portrait, ratio being height to width. There is also a special case when you set 1 here, which will use auto-calculated ratios, as in previous versions. Under this, the next setting is called masonry 2x2 width. This is the pixel width of an image when a 1x1 square image will start taking up 2x2 two two squares instead of just 1. I have set this option manually in the media library on one specific image, but this setting will work automatically on square images over this threshold. So the thing to understand about the masonry layout is that you have different options. You can adjust the settings here, and if I adjust this aspect ratio back to 1.3 for example, some of my images now show in portrait, while others have become more landscape. But as you can see down the bottom, it's not working that well with these images. So what to do? Well you could go to the Children tab and move the images around to see how that affects the layout, or you could add or remove images into the gallery to see how that works. Alternatively you could adjust the options again and try a different aspect ratio, or adjust the masonry 2x2 width option. Or for more granular control, you could go into specific images in the media library and specify how they should display. With the masonry layout there are lots of options to give you an interesting looking gallery. For my example, I really like the look of this but I need to fix the bottom part. I think I will move the pizza image down to move it to the other side of the layout, and then I will head to my media library, and tell the last two images to display as one by one in the layout. Once I do that, I'll come back to the gallery and save this, and then just refresh to see what we have. Yeah, that looks great. I'm completely happy with that. Ok, the thing to understand with the masonry layout is that it's based on a 1x1 one one grid. If we start at the top, we know that this gallery has three columns, and we can see that the first image takes up one column in each of the first two rows. The second image just takes up one column in the first row, and the third image, which is now portrait oriented, also takes up one column in both the first and second rows. So that's the three columns full in the first row. In the second row, the first column and last columns are filled with the images from the top row, while the image in column 2 is again taking up one column in two rows, and so on down the rows. No matter how you arrange it, the combination of images is filling the three columns of the row. 
OK, let's edit the element again and see what else there is here to look at. On the Design tab, after the Masonry options, there are just the usual options we looked at previously. Finally, there's the Captions tab. I think there's already enough going on with the Masonry layout here, so I probably wouldn't add captions to a gallery like this. But I will just choose a layout to demonstrate. I really like the one called Racer. And so if I choose that, we can see we get a caption on the image, and a nice effect when we mouse over one. There is full control over typography, font, size and colours here, so you could easily make this look really good. The caption here is coming directly from the title field in the image in the media library, but if we come back to the children tab and edit an image, we can see that when we have captions enabled, we can also add a title and caption here in the element children instead. But for my case, I'm going to come back and turn the captions off for this gallery. To learn more about captions on image-based elements, see the link doc and video below. OK, that pretty much covers it. Let's just save our page, and have a look at this gallery on the front end. And that looks really nice. It's important to note that the masonry effect only affects the thumbnails in the gallery. In the light box, these images open at their original size and aspect ratio. OK, thanks for staying with me. That's the amazing gallery element. Let us know in the comments how you like to use it. I think I need to go and get something to eat. This concludes our video on how to use the gallery element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.